Welcome back to Stoicism 2.0. Have you ever been told you're too nice? Maybe it was meant as a compliment, but did it leave you wondering if there could be a downside to your kindness? Today we're diving into the realm of excessive niceness and exploring ways it can, surprisingly, have a negative impact on your life. While kindness is often loaded as a virtue, there's a point where it can become detrimental. Being too nice can morph into a people-pleasing habit that leads to resentment, self-neglect, and even manipulative behavior from others. In this video, we'll unveil 10 ways being overly kind can potentially ruin your life. Get ready to examine your own niceness levels and discover how to cultivate a healthier balance. Point 1. Sacrificing personal boundaries. The first way being too nice can ruin your life is by eroding your personal boundaries. When you're always putting others first and sacrificing your own needs and desires, you become vulnerable to manipulation and burnout. Imagine this. You're constantly saying yes to everyone's requests, even when they're unreasonable or inconvenient. You spend your free time running errands and doing favors for others, neglecting your own hobbies and interests. You feel obligated to be available 24 7 even when you need a break. This constant state of self-sacrifice leads to resentment and exhaustion. You feel taken advantage of and unappreciated. You lose touch with your own needs and desires, leading to a loss of self-worth and identity. Real-life example, Sarah is a naturally kind and helpful person. She always volunteers to help her colleagues with their work, even when her own workload is already heavy. She also frequently bends over backwards to accommodate her friends' requests, even if it means sacrificing her own plans. As a result, Sarah often feels overwhelmed and stressed. She feels taken advantage of and resentful towards others. She also feels like she has no time for herself and her own needs. How to avoid this? Learn to say no politely but firmly. It's okay to prioritize your own needs and well-being. Set clear boundaries with others. Communicate your expectations and limitations. Don't be afraid to ask for help when you need it. It's not a sign of weakness, it's a sign of self-awareness. Make time for yourself and your own interests. Do things that make you happy and recharge your batteries. Point 2. Difficulty saying no. Another way being too nice can ruin your life is by making it difficult to say no. Many people who struggle with excessive niceness have a fear of disappointing others or causing conflict. They may feel obligated to say yes to everything, even when it means overextending themselves. Imagine this. You're invited to three different events on the same night. You know you can't possibly attend them all, but you feel bad saying no to anyone. So you end up rushing from event to event, feeling stressed and exhausted. You don't truly enjoy any of the events because you're constantly worried about being late or missing out. This inability to say no can lead to overcommitment and burnout. You may find yourself taking on more than you can handle, leaving you feeling overwhelmed and unfulfilled. You may also miss out on important opportunities because you're too busy doing things for others. Real life example, John is always eager to please everyone. He has a hard time saying no to requests, even when he's already overloaded. As a result, he frequently takes on too much work and ends up working long hours into the night. He feels stressed and exhausted, but he's afraid of letting down his colleagues. How to overcome this? Practice saying no in low-stakes situations. Start by saying no to small requests, like going out for coffee when you're tired. Develop a script for saying no. This will make it easier to decline requests without feeling awkward or guilty. Reframe your thinking. Instead of viewing no as a negative word, See it as a way to protect your time and energy. Focus on the positive consequences of saying no. Remind yourself that you'll have more time for yourself and your loved ones. By learning to say no effectively, you can avoid overcommitment and create a more balanced and fulfilling life. Point 3. Attracting toxic relationships. Being overly nice can unfortunately become a magnet for toxic people, drawing them towards your inherent kindness and willingness to please. While this may seem counterintuitive, it's rooted in the manipulative nature of some individuals who prey on those who are easily influenced and reluctant to set boundaries. Here's how excessive niceness can attract toxic relationships. 1. Difficulty setting boundaries. When you struggle to say no and establish clear boundaries, you create a vacuum that toxic people are eager to fill. They may test your limits, guilt trip you into doing things you don't want to do, and gradually exploit your generosity. This can lead to an imbalanced dynamic where you're constantly giving while they're only taking. 2. People pleasing behavior. If your need to please others outweighs your own well being, you become vulnerable to manipulation. 
Toxic individuals can quickly learn how to push your buttons and exploit your desire for approval. They may use flattery, emotional appeals, or even threats to get what they want from you, leaving you feeling drained and resentful. 3. Difficulty recognizing red flags When you're overly focused on being kind and accommodating, it becomes difficult to recognize red flags in people's behavior. You may excuse their manipulative actions as harmless or simply overlook them altogether. This can lead to prolonged exposure to toxic relationships that negatively impact your emotional well-being and self-esteem. 4. Lack of assertiveness If you struggle to express your needs and opinions assertively, toxic people can easily steamroll you and take advantage of your passive nature. They may make decisions for you, disregard your feelings, and invalidate your perspectives. This can lead to a feeling of powerlessness and frustration in your relationships. 5. Low self-esteem Overly nice individuals often struggle with low self-esteem and a lack of self-worth. This can make them more susceptible to manipulation and exploitation from toxic people. They may believe they don't deserve better treatment or that their needs are less important than others. Examples of toxic relationship dynamics The needy friend This friend constantly relies on you for emotional support, financial assistance, and favors. They may guilt trip you into helping them with their problems even when it's inconvenient for you. The controlling partner. This partner tries to control your every move, dictating who you can see, what you can do, and even how you should dress. They may use jealousy and manipulation to keep you isolated and dependent on them. The envious colleague. This colleague undermines your accomplishments, takes credit for your work, and spreads rumors about you. They may try to sabotage your career and prevent you from getting ahead. The demanding family member. This family member constantly makes unreasonable demands and expects you to drop everything to help them. They may criticize you, insult you, and make you feel obligated to fulfill their every wish. Strategies to protect yourself Develop a strong sense of self. Build self-esteem and confidence by focusing on your strengths, accomplishments, and positive qualities. Set healthy boundaries. Learn to say no confidently and assertively. Communicate your needs and expectations clearly and directly. Recognize red flags. Pay attention to warning signs in people's behavior, such as manipulation, emotional abuse, and disrespect. Develop assertiveness skills. Learn to express your needs, opinions, and feelings effectively. Practice communicating assertively in different situations. Build a support network. Surround yourself with positive and supportive people who respect your boundaries and value your well-being. By recognizing the potential downsides of being excessively nice and implementing strategies to protect yourself, you can cultivate healthier relationships and avoid falling prey to manipulation and exploitation. Remember, true kindness begins with self-respect and the ability to set healthy boundaries. Don't let your kindness become a weakness. Turn it into a strength by learning to say no and prioritize your own well-being. Point four, internalizing resentment. While bottling up emotions may seem like the kinder or easier option in the moment, it can have detrimental consequences in the long run. When we suppress our true feelings, particularly those of anger or resentment, they find other ways to manifest themselves, often leading to negative outcomes for both our physical and mental health. What happens when we internalize resentment? Emotional roller coaster. Suppressing emotions doesn't make them disappear. Instead, they fester within us, leading to feelings of frustration, bitterness, and negativity. This can manifest as sudden outbursts of anger, emotional withdrawal, or passive-aggressive behavior. Physical impact. Repressed emotions can take a toll on our physical health. Studies have linked chronic stress and suppressed emotions to increased risk of heart disease, headaches, digestive problems, and even weakened immune systems. Relationship issues. Bottled up emotions can negatively affect our relationships. We may become withdrawn from our loved ones, lash out unexpectedly, or find it difficult to communicate effectively. This can lead to misunderstandings, conflict, and even the breakdown of relationships. Self-esteem. When we constantly suppress our feelings, we disconnect from ourselves and our needs. This can lead to feelings of low self-esteem, self-doubt, and a sense of inauthenticity. Why we internalize emotions? Several factors can contribute to the tendency to internalize emotions. These include fear of conflict. Some people may avoid expressing their true feelings in an effort to avoid conflict or upset others. Lack of emotional awareness. Others may not be fully aware of their emotions or how to express them effectively. Cultural norms. 
Certain cultures may emphasize suppressing emotions, particularly negative ones. Past experiences, negative experiences in childhood or past relationships can lead to a fear of expressing emotions. How to break free from internalized resentment. Practice emotional awareness. Take time to identify and acknowledge your emotions. Journaling, meditation, and mindfulness can be helpful tools for this. Develop healthy coping mechanisms. Find healthy ways to express and manage your emotions, such as exercise, creative outlets, or talking to a therapist. Set healthy boundaries. Learn to say no and communicate your needs assertively. Seek support. Surround yourself with supportive people who encourage you to express your true feelings. Consider therapy. If you struggle to manage your emotions or break free from internalized resentment, seeking professional help from a therapist can be beneficial. Remember, expressing your emotions in a healthy way is crucial for your mental and physical well-being. By confronting your feelings, learning from them, and communicating them effectively, you can build stronger relationships, improve your self-esteem, and create a more fulfilling life. Point 5. Neglecting personal goals while helping others and being kind is undoubtedly a positive quality when taken to the extreme, it can lead to the neglect of your own personal goals and aspirations. This can be detrimental to your overall well-being and happiness in the long run. Imagine this, you spend every waking moment volunteering your time and energy to various causes. You prioritize the needs of others above your own, sacrificing your hobbies, interests, and dreams. While you feel good about helping others, you gradually feel a sense of emptiness and unfulfillment within yourself. Here's how being too focused on others can lead to neglecting personal goals. Time commitment. Helping others takes time and energy. When you constantly prioritize the needs of others, you leave little room for pursuing your own goals and aspirations. Distraction. Focusing on the problems and needs of others can distract you from your own path and goals. This can make it difficult to stay motivated and focused on achieving your dreams. Self-neglect. When you constantly put others first, you neglect your own needs and well-being. This can lead to exhaustion, burnout, and resentment. Lost sense of self. When you focus solely on helping others, you may lose touch with your own desires, passions, and aspirations. This can lead to a sense of emptiness and lack of direction in your own life. It is important to strike a balance between helping others and pursuing your own goals. Here are some tips. Set boundaries. Learn to say no to requests that are unreasonable or that would take you away from your own goals. Schedule time for yourself. Make time for your own hobbies, interests, and activities that bring you joy and fulfillment. Delegate tasks. Don't be afraid to ask for help from others when needed. This will free up your time and energy to focus on your own goals. Communicate your needs. Talk to your loved ones and friends about your goals and aspirations. They can support you and help you stay on track. Don't let guilt control you. It's natural to feel guilty when you say no or prioritize your own needs. But remember, you can't help others effectively if you are burnt out or neglecting your own well-being. Remember, taking care of yourself and pursuing your own dreams is not selfish. It is essential. By striking a balance between helping others and taking care of yourself, you can create a more fulfilling and balanced life for yourself. Point 6. Fear of Confrontation Many individuals who struggle with excessive niceness also harbor a strong fear of confrontation. This fear can manifest in various ways, such as Avoiding conflict at all costs. Individuals may try to appease everyone, even if it means sacrificing their own needs and desires. Difficulty expressing disagreement. They may find it difficult to voice their opinions when they differ from others, even when they strongly believe in them. Passive-aggressive behavior. Frustration and resentment build up due to suppressed emotions, leading to indirect forms of aggression. Difficulty setting boundaries. Individuals may struggle to say no or enforce their limits, leading to feelings of being taken advantage of. Why does this fear exist? Several factors can contribute to the fear of confrontation. Low self-esteem. Individuals with low self-esteem may believe their opinions or feelings are not important, leading them to avoid expressing them. Fear of rejection. They may worry that disagreeing with others or asserting their needs will lead to rejection or disapproval. Past experiences. Negative experiences with conflict in childhood or past relationships can lead to a fear of confrontation. Unhealthy communication patterns. Growing up in a household where conflict was avoided or handled aggressively can lead to unhealthy coping mechanisms. Strategies for assertiveness without aggression. 
Identify your triggers. Recognize situations that trigger your fear of confrontation and develop strategies to manage them. Practice saying no. Start with small requests and gradually work your way up to saying no to more difficult things. Use I statements. Communicate your needs and feelings in a way that doesn't attack the other person. Focus on finding solutions. Instead of focusing on the problem, try to work collaboratively with the other person to find a solution that works for everyone. Be assertive, not aggressive. There's a difference between being assertive and being aggressive. Assertiveness is about expressing your needs and opinions respectfully, while aggression is about attacking or belittling the other person. Seek professional help. If you struggle with overcoming your fear of confrontation, consider seeking professional help from a therapist. Remember, confrontation doesn't have to be negative. When handled effectively, it can be a healthy way to resolve conflict, build stronger relationships, and ultimately lead to a more fulfilling life. Point 7. Emotional Exhaustion Constantly putting others' needs before your own can lead to emotional exhaustion, a state of emotional depletion characterized by feelings of fatigue, cynicism, and a sense of detachment. This can occur when you overextend yourself. Taking on too many responsibilities and commitments can leave you feeling drained and overwhelmed. Neglect your own needs. When you prioritize others' needs over your own, you fail to replenish your emotional reserves, leading to burnout. Experience chronic stress. Witnessing others suffering and constantly being responsible for their well-being can be a source of chronic stress, which can deplete your emotional resources. Lack healthy coping mechanisms. If you struggle to manage stress and express your emotions effectively, you're more susceptible to emotional exhaustion. Signs of emotional exhaustion. Constant fatigue and feeling drained. Difficulty concentrating and making decisions. Irritability and cynicism loss of motivation and enthusiasm, withdrawal from social activities, feeling emotionally numb and detached, tips for self-care and maintaining emotional well-being, set boundaries, learn to say no and prioritize your own needs and well-being. Practice self-care, make time for activities that you enjoy and that help you relax and recharge, such as exercise, meditation, spending time in nature or hobbies. Delegate tasks, don't be afraid to ask for help from others when needed. Express your emotions. Talk to a trusted friend, family member, therapist, or journal about your feelings and experiences. Develop healthy coping mechanisms. Find healthy ways to manage stress, such as exercise, deep breathing, relaxation techniques, or creative outlets. Seek support. If you're struggling to cope with emotional exhaustion, don't hesitate to seek professional help from a therapist. Prioritizing your own well-being is not selfish. It's essential for maintaining your emotional balance, preventing burnout, and being able to effectively support others. By taking care of yourself, you can show up for others in a more genuine and sustainable way. Point 8. Diminished self-esteem. While being kind and helpful is admirable, when taken to the extreme, it can inadvertently lead to a decline in self-esteem. This can happen for a few reasons. 1. Neglecting personal needs. When you constantly prioritize the needs of others over your own, it sends a subtle message to yourself that your own needs and desires are not important. This can lead to feelings of self-worthlessness and a diminished sense of self-efficacy. 2. Lack of self-validation. When you rely heavily on others for approval and validation, you become vulnerable to external criticism and negative feedback. This can undermine your self-confidence and make it difficult to develop a healthy self-image. 3 people pleasing tendencies. When your need to please others becomes an obsession, it can lead to self-denial and sacrificing your own values and beliefs for the sake of gaining acceptance. This can create a sense of inauthenticity and diminish your sense of self-worth. 4. Difficulty setting boundaries. Individuals who struggle with excessive niceness often find it difficult to say no and set healthy boundaries. This can lead to being taken advantage of and having your needs and time disregarded. This can contribute to feelings of resentment and frustration, further diminishing self-esteem. 5. Unrealistic expectations. Individuals who are overly nice often hold themselves to unrealistic standards of selflessness and sacrifice. This can lead to feelings of guilt and shame when they inevitably fall short of their own expectations. Building and maintaining a healthy self-image. 1. Challenge negative self-talk. Pay attention to your self-talk and replace negative thoughts with positive affirmations. Focus on your strengths, accomplishments, and positive qualities. 
2. Set healthy boundaries. Learn to say no to unreasonable requests and prioritize your own needs and well-being. 3. Celebrate your successes. Take time to acknowledge and celebrate your accomplishments, no matter how small they may seem. 4. Surround yourself with positive people. Spend time with individuals who appreciate and support you for who you are. 5. Practice self-compassion. Be kind and understanding towards yourself. Remember that everyone makes mistakes and it's important to forgive yourself. 6. Develop your passions. Make time for activities you enjoy that bring you a sense of fulfillment and accomplishment. 7. Seek support. If you struggle with low self-esteem, consider seeking professional help from a therapist or counselor. Building a healthy self-esteem is a journey, not a destination. Be patient with yourself, celebrate your progress, and don't be afraid to seek help when you need it. By prioritizing your well-being and valuing yourself, you can create a more fulfilling and meaningful life. Point 9. Inability to receive. While being able to give readily is admirable, a crucial aspect of healthy relationships is the ability to receive with grace and gratitude. This may seem counterintuitive for individuals who are overly nice and accustomed to prioritizing the needs of others. However, failing to accept help can have negative consequences. 1. Fostering dependence. When you constantly give and refuse to receive, you create a dynamic of dependence in your relationships. This can make you feel resentful and overwhelmed, while depriving others of the opportunity to feel valuable and contribute. 2. Hindered growth. Refusing support can limit your personal growth and development. By being open to receive help, you allow yourself to learn from others, gain new perspectives, and develop your skills. 3. Damaged relationships. Your inability to receive can create a sense of imbalance in your relationships. People may feel rejected and unappreciated when their offers of help are constantly denied. This can lead to resentment, withdrawal, and ultimately damaged relationships. 4. Missed opportunities. When you close yourself off to receiving, you miss out on opportunities for joy, connection, and support. Accepting kindness can enrich your life in ways you may not expect. 5. Self-sabotage. By denying the self-support, you limit your own potential for success and happiness. Accepting help when needed is not a sign of weakness, but rather a sign of strength and self-awareness. Tips for accepting help gracefully. 1. Acknowledge your worth. Remember that you deserve to receive help and kindness, just like anyone else. 2. Express gratitude. Thank people for their offers of support and let them know you appreciate their generosity. 3. Be specific. If you need help with something specific, don't hesitate to ask for it directly. 4. Reciprocate when possible. While receiving is important, aim for a balanced relationship where you also give back when you can. 5. Release the need for control. Accepting help doesn't mean losing control. Trust that others can offer valuable assistance without taking over your life. Accepting help is not a sign of weakness, but a sign of strength and self-awareness. By opening yourself up to receiving kindness and support, you can create healthier, more fulfilling relationships and set yourself up for greater success and happiness in life. Point 10. Losing authenticity. Perhaps the most significant cost of being overly nice is the gradual erosion of your authentic self. This insidious process can manifest in several ways. 1. Constant performance. When you constantly strive to please others, you focus on how you think they want you to be rather than who you truly are. This can lead to a feeling of inauthenticity and a sense of disconnection from your true self. 2. Suppression of true feelings. In an attempt to avoid conflict or disapproval, you may suppress your true emotions and opinions. This can lead to emotional stagnation, difficulty connecting with others on a genuine level, and eventually resentment towards yourself and others. 3. Difficulty making decisions. When you prioritize the opinions and desires of others, it can be challenging to make decisions that align with your own values and goals. This can lead to feelings of uncertainty, frustration, and a lack of direction in your life. 4. Sacrificing your values. In your desire to please others, you may find yourself bending over backwards to accommodate their needs, even if it means compromising your own values and principles. This can lead to a feeling of guilt, shame, and a loss of personal integrity. 5. Losing touch with your passions. When you prioritize the needs and desires of others over your own, you may neglect your own passions and interests. This can lead to a feeling of unfulfilled potential and a sense of emptiness in your life. Staying true to yourself. 1. Practice self-awareness. 
Take time for introspection and identify your core values, beliefs, and passions. 2. Express your true self. Don't be afraid to express your authentic self, even if it means risking disapproval or judgment from others. 3. Set healthy boundaries. Learn to say no to requests that don't align with your values or priorities. 4. Surround yourself with supportive people. Connect with individuals who appreciate and accept you for who you truly are. 5. Seek professional help. If you struggle to stay true to yourself, consider seeking guidance from a therapist or counselor. Being true to yourself is essential for living a fulfilling and authentic life. It allows you to connect with others on a deeper level, experience genuine joy and satisfaction, and ultimately reach your full potential. Don't be afraid to embrace your individuality and let your true self shine through. If you enjoyed our deep dive into the world of niceness, don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button. Join our community and let's keep these conversations going. Until next time, stay kind, stay true, and take care of that wonderful heart of yours.